I am Laura Dixon, and you are listening to the Naturally Thin for Life podcast, episode number 187, Outsmart Your Diet Brain. Welcome to the Naturally Thin for Life podcast. I'm going to teach you how to get out of your diet brain so that you too can be naturally thin for life. No counting, restricting, or obsessing. I am going to take the mystery out of it for you so that you can become naturally thin starting today. Are you ready? Let's do this. Hello, friends. Welcome to this week's podcast episode where I am going to teach you how to outsmart your diet brain. I want to walk you through a couple of the most common diet brain myths, diet brain lies, a lot of what we pick up when we're dieting that we don't realize is creating a lot of habits that we probably don't want, a lot of mental habits and a lot of physical habits that are not aligned with your naturally thin self. So I'm going to walk you through today a couple of those common diet brain lies, and I'm going to teach you how to outsmart your diet brain. So I'm going to teach you what those diet brain lies are, how to overcome them, and then I'm going to teach you a specific tool to be able to grow your own skill of being able to outsmart your diet brain. Because your diet brain is the biggest obstacle and really the only obstacle between you and the peaceful, harmonious, battle-free life in your dream body. And so it's really important that you not only know what some of these diet brain lies are and these myths and you know how to overcome them, but you know how to spot anything specific in your own brain that is not aligned with your naturally thin self. And a lot of that comes from your diet brain. So I'm going to dive right in to a couple of the most common diet brain lies, and I'm going to teach you the corresponding naturally thin truth, and then I'm going to leave you with a tool so that you know how to know if you are operating out of your diet brain or operating out of your naturally thin brain. So I'm going to walk you through four common diet brain myths. The first is that your body doesn't want you to lose weight, and therefore you need to force it to shed pounds. And this leads to the belief that you need more discipline, you need more self-control, you need to be harder on yourself, you need to do something that's more regimented. And I talked about this on the podcast episode a couple of weeks ago, The Right Discipline, where I shared with you that yes, in fact, discipline is required to be naturally thin, but it's a disciplined mindset and a disciplined focus on feeling incredible in your body, feeling energetic, feeling light, feeling lean, feeling confident, feeling grounded, feeling nourished, feeling nurtured, feeling at peace, feeling calm, feeling relaxed, however you want to feel in your body. It's a commitment to feeling the way you want to feel physically and the way you want to feel emotionally in your unique relationship with your body and your unique relationship with food. And you can have any relationship you want with your body and any relationship you want with food, you get to decide what you want that relationship to be like. And if you have a battling relationship, a struggling relationship, a forceful relationship, most likely that has developed from years or decades of dieting. And so you do not have to believe the diet brain myth that your body doesn't want to lose weight. What I firmly believe is that your body wants you to feel as energetic, as optimal, as alive and vibrant and radiant as possible for you every single day. And what that looks like day to day may vary. What that looks like season or phase of life for you may vary. But there is an optimal vibrance and aliveness that your body is craving And when you know how to tune into your body and actually listen to your body and follow your body's innate roadmap, your body doesn't need to be forced to lose weight. It's like, I've been waiting for this all along. I've just been waiting for you to listen to me. I've been trying to tell you exactly what we want you to do, right? If you imagine your body's talking to your brain. So your body wants you to live in your most alive, vibrant, what I call your naturally thin body at your naturally thin weight, where you don't need to force it to lose weight. You don't need to force yourself to keep weight off. You just live there with ease and peace. And it doesn't come from 
a discipline in regards to like following disciplined rules and using a regimented exercise program and feeling super controlled and watching your portions and micromanaging everything you eat. It comes from a loving discipline of being in love with listening to your body, being in love with feeling really good. And so that's the first myth that I want you to consider debunking for yourself that you can outsmart this lie that your brain tells you that your body doesn't want to lose weight. But when you know how to outsmart that, when you are outsmarting it and you notice that that's what your brain is potentially telling you, that your body doesn't want to lose weight, it's really important that you direct your brain. And I'm going to go back to this after I walk through a couple of these diet brain lies for you with the tool of exactly how to do this. But you want to be able to redirect your brain to the relationship you want with your body, to the relationship you want with food. You can have any relationship with food and any relationship with your body that you want. You get to decide what serves you, your unique body, your unique goals, your unique lifestyle, not someone else. You get to decide that. And so if you want to keep believing that your body doesn't want to lose weight and you need to force your body to do that, you can choose to keep thinking that, but you could also choose to believe that you are designed to live in a body that feels as optimal, as energetic, as peaceful, as relaxed, as battle-free as possible. And the more you think about that body, that relationship with food, the more and more evidence you will find and the more and more that will be your reality. That will be what you see. That will be what you experience and it will become just second nature. It will become innate. But when you're used to dieting and believing that your body doesn't want to lose weight and you need to use force and restriction and a lot of rules and all the things you've been telling yourself, that's where you placed your attention. And where you place your attention will be what grows in your reality. It will be what your brain will find evidence for. It will be what you continue to struggle with. But when you let go of the struggle, which is the next one I want to talk about that I will struggle forever. When you let go of that diet brain lie, then you can start to experience and find evidence for how it doesn't actually need to be a struggle. Because when you believe this second diet brain lie that I'll struggle forever, then why bother, right? Like if you're going to struggle forever, why bother? Plus then with this, a lot of times I will hear people say, well, it's harder to lose weight the closer you get to your goal. And I'm like, no, it's not. <laughs> it's kind of like if you've ever heard people say what comes naturally and innately for you, sometimes you forget that it comes naturally and innately to you because it doesn't to other people. And so when I hear people say that, I'm like, oh, that's right. People believe that because they're dieting. And I used to believe that, that it was really hard to lose weight. So i.e. you need to force your body to lose weight. And then not only are you going to lose the weight, but you're going to struggle to keep it off forever. And it's going to get harder and harder the closer you get to your goal. And then you're going to need to live in a maintenance mode. And it's kind of like, well, when you think about if that's really what you're believing subconsciously, if that's what your diet brain keeps feeding you and you keep believing it's true because you haven't outsmart that part of your brain yet, then it makes sense that you don't lose weight and keep it off because your brain is like, I'm going to struggle forever. I need to force my body to do this. And I'm going to need to live in this terrifying, like rule-ridden maintenance mode forever. Who wants to do that? But when you again understand that your body has an innate desire to want to feel incredible, and the more you tap into that innate desire with particular tools, and I teach you a lot of those tools here on the podcast, then the easier and easier it is for you to not only lose weight, but to lose weight in a peaceful way, to lose weight in a way that feels like your mind and body are in sync and to never worry about the weight coming back. When you use tools to tune into your body's innate roadmap to losing weight, to feeling incredible, to having a calm, friendly relationship with hunger, loving to eat food that tastes good and you enjoy and that leaves your body feeling the way you want to feel, and to easily stop eating when you still feel nourished and energetic and lean and fit and all the ways you want to feel, and that's just your day-to-day -day experience where you eat and it tastes good and you feel good all day. There's no like 
maintenance mode that you need. And when you lose weight in that way, in that peaceful, harmonious way, by honoring your body, by not forcing your body to do something, and you watch the ease and with the weight comes off, then what happens is you see how easy it is. You start to build up that evidence for yourself. And now that doesn't mean that there are not obstacles, right, which are like all your diet brain obstacles. It does not mean that there won't be obstacles, that there won't be challenges, but you are able to overcome those obstacles, those social situations, that peer pressure from other people, or the quote unquote tempting food that you used to tell yourself you can never have. And how do you learn how to be around food in those situations? Of course, there will be some obstacles like that. What happens is you tune even more into how your body wants to feel. You fall even more in love with feeling incredible, so much so that you can see your former favorite, too tasty, I could never turn it down food, even though it's going to leave me feeling terrible afterwards. You have an experience then where you are around that formerly too irresistible of a food and you actually don't even think about it and you don't even care about it. Not because you can't have it, but by remembering that you can always eat any food you want. You're an adult grown human. (laughs) You get to decide when, what, and how much food to put in your mouth. But when you are so in love with feeling on fire in your body and you love the way you feel and you only ever eat food that tastes good and allows you to feel the way you want to feel and you're never depriving yourself, then you can see food that leaves you feeling terrible and actually not even want it. And that's when you never need a maintenance mode. That's when it actually gets easier and easier the closer you get to your goal. Because when you lose weight in this way, you don't need to struggle forever when you have built the skill and you've compounded over and over and over and over and over the skill of feeling incredible in your body. You start from feeling a little bit better to feeling good, to feeling great, to feeling incredible, to feeling amazing. So much so that you'll get to the point where you can literally see food that you used to believe was irresistible and actually have like a visceral negative reaction to it. I now have this experience over and over again. I used to really love donuts and I used to love the donuts with like, I don't know quite how to describe them. They weren't like the Krispy Kreme ones, but like kind of, but like with like chocolate on top and not with cream on the inside because I never liked cream on the inside. But anyways, I used to like really love donuts and I heard someone talking about and I've seen donuts and I've been like literally like, oh, and like I can almost, it's like I have a chemical taste that happens in my mouth where it's a visceral full body rejection of the donut only because I've tuned in over and over and over and over again to how that type of food feels in my body. And so your taste buds actually change over time when you fall in love with feeling really good, where your taste buds are like, I don't even want that because I know how it feels in my body. And so my taste buds are so much more naturally inclined to want to eat food that tastes good. (laughs) Side note, We are currently eating plant-based and someone said to my husband recently, they were like, oh, I could never do that because I just like really love good tasting food. And I was like, yo, (laughs) you." (laughs) in my head I said this, I was like, yo, you've gotten it all wrong. I love good tasting food. I don't call myself a foodie, but I would probably fall into that category. I love good tasting food. I love to try new good tasting food. I love tons of flavor. If it doesn't have flavor, it's a no for me. And so I love to eat food that tastes good and that allows me to feel the way I want to feel in my body. So ironically, I crave tastier and tastier and tastier food that allows me to feel more energized and lean and fit and the ways that I want to feel in my body. And so when you understand this, then you can start to see, you can start to outsmart your diet brain when it tells you, oh, my body doesn't want to lose weight and oh, I'm going to need to struggle forever. And when you stop and you question that, you're like, but if that wasn't true, what could it be like for me? And let yourself live in that question of like, but what could it be like for me if that wasn't true? And the third diet brain lie I want to share with you is that I hear this a lot, that if you let go of the rules, if you let go of counting calories, if you let go of your fasting window, if you let go of your macro profiling, if you let go of micromanaging your food, if you let go of your training program for your marathon, if you let go of the strict rules that you're following right now, whatever it is or what you've done in the past, if you let go of that, then you're going to gain weight. 
And so there's a part of you that wants to let go of all of that, but you're really scared that if you do, you will put on even more weight. And this diet brain lie, it prevents you from the peace and freedom of learning and living with the most impeccable, unbreakable self-trust with your body. And when you tell yourself, I can't have something. So if you're like, well, I can't have that peace. I can't have that freedom yet. I can't have that body that I want yet. It activates a fear scarcity response in your brain. And when you do that, what happens is you will start to see all the ways that you can't have it, but from like this really tense type place. And so it's like you try to desperately grasp for it. And that's what's happening when you're counting calories or tracking your macros or trying to eat, you know, less than 30 grams of carbs a day in a way that you don't want to keep living that way. When you say, well, I can't have the natural thin body with the peace of mind and the freedom that I want, it's like then the pendulum swings and the, the reaction to telling yourself that is like, let me find some really rigid rules to try to micromanage my body as best as I can. And when you fear that if you let go of the restriction or the deprivation you're currently using to try to manage your weight, when you live in that fear, you miss out on more of what I was just sharing, which is the lived reality when you recognize that what's more true for you is that you can totally eat that thing. (laughs) You can totally eat anything you want whenever you want. You're an adult grown human. And that's more true than telling yourself, I can't have that. And when you fear that if you tell yourself you can have it, then you're going to eat all of the food all of the time, which simply isn't true. But when you tell yourself you need the restriction and you need the rules and you have the fear that if you let them go, then you're going to gain weight, what you miss out on is the freedom of recognizing what's more true than any of the restriction, any of the diet lies, any of those myths, is that I can eat anything I want whenever I want. But... What do I actually want? You can't really know what your body really wants, what you really want when you're following some arbitrary rules. And so when you get in the habit of asking yourself, okay, I can totally eat that. But my question to myself is, how do I want to feel in my body when I'm done eating? And will I feel that way if I eat this food that's in front of me? And again, the more you practice this and this becomes your lived way of being, then the easier and easier and easier and easier it is to lose weight and the more weight you lose because you just get better and better and better at innately answering that question. So much so that it happens on autopilot. So much so that I can see food that I used to feel like I just felt compelled to eat it, like literally as if I had zero self-control around it. And I don't even think about eating it. Like, it doesn't even cross my mind. I'm not like, should I eat it? Shouldn't I? How will I feel? How won't I feel? It just doesn't even happen in my brain at all. And that's because I've just practiced over and over and over again deliberately, but then it becomes easy and automatic in your peaceful way of living when you don't live by rules of restriction, when you don't live by rules of deprivation and by willpower. And the other thing you miss out on when you're living in the fear of I need to follow this rule and if I don't, then I'm going to gain weight. But what you miss out on, which is even more true than any of the arbitrary rules that you're following that you don't really want to keep following anymore, is that you can have that, that food, that drink, that combination of ingredients in front of you whenever you want. But that if you know it doesn't feel good in your body, that you don't actually want it. These are the keys to the land of freedom when you truly, genuinely don't want food that's not going to leave you feeling the way you want to feel in your body. It's just the most freeing experience and it gets to go with you everywhere you go. It doesn't just live in your house when you're in your normal routine. It gets to go with you on vacation. It gets to go with you to the restaurant. It gets to go with you to the social event. It gets to go with you throughout the holidays. It gets to go with you in the two months leading up to swimsuit season. It gets to go with you, you know, the six weeks before you're going to a wedding. You don't ever have to be thinking about, oh, I got to get serious now. I need more discipline. I need to, you know, get ready and prepare my body for this event. No, you just live your life in your naturally thin body with the freedom in the way you were designed to live. And the fourth diet brain lie I want to help you start to outsmart 
is that you haven't lost weight or you aren't at the weight you want yet because it's a discipline problem. And I talked about this a couple of weeks ago and the right discipline is the title of the episode if you want to go back and hear more. But I want to reiterate it here because I see how prevalent this diet brain lie is, especially for women who are very driven and very ambitious and like super achievers, that because they have so much discipline that they think, well, I must just need a little bit more. That must be what's wrong (laughs) in this way, right? But it's simply not true at all. You want to have disciplined awareness and a disciplined connection with your body. And when you think that you need to force your body to lose weight, that you'll struggle forever, and that you need the strict rules and restriction in order to not only lose weight, but to make sure you don't gain weight, when you believe any of those, it's almost like this fourth, oh, it's a discipline problem diet lie becomes an inevitable byproduct where you're like, okay, so my body doesn't want to lose weight. I'm going to struggle forever. And I need the strict rules so that I don't gain weight and so that I can lose weight. It almost is like, well, then it must be a discipline problem. (laughs) It's like, I don't know what else it would be. So all of these kind of diet brain lies go together. And when you start outsmarting, one of them, you will start to see how the rest are also a fallacy. And so if it's not a discipline problem in that you need to follow rules more and you need to work through and battle through the struggle and force your body to lose weight, then you want to start asking yourself, if it's not a discipline problem, what could it be? (laughs) And I shared with you in that episode, The Right Discipline, that it's that discipline is a loving, calm discipline into that connectedness with your body that awareness of what your body is telling you and fine-tuning that over and over, and a discipline to the release of emotions that lead to eating in a way that doesn't serve you. And so when you think it is a discipline problem, and then you can kind of be telling yourself, well, like, I know what I should be doing, but I'm just not doing it, right? I just, I just, need, I just need more discipline, which again stems from the other diet brain lie that you need to force your body to do something. When you stop believing it's a discipline problem, you stop believing you'll struggle forever. You stop believing that your body doesn't want to lose weight. You stop believing that more strict rules and more rigid instructions to follow are the way to lose weight. Then what happens is you inevitably turn to your own body and your own mind to find the solution. Which, when you think about it, it kind of makes sense because if your body wants to lose weight, it seems like you would probably be the best one to solve for that problem (laughs) of wanting to lose weight and not having lost the weight yet, right? If that's how we're defining the problem. And so you want to have the skill of being able to outsmart your diet brain. So I just gave you four common diet brain lies, and I want to now teach you a tool to be able to outsmart any lies that your diet brain tells you. So I'm going to call this the ABCD method, and you can kind of put in E and F as well. So you can call it the ABCDEF method if you want. And this is how you're going to know if your diet brain is the one making the decisions or if your naturally thin brain is the one making decisions. Because you need to be able to know if you're living from your diet brain, you need to be able to spot it in order to change it. Because every time you make a decision from your diet brain, you strengthen your diet brain. Every time you make a decision from your naturally thin brain, you strengthen your naturally thin brain. And so the ABCDEF method goes like this. A is aware. B is breathe, which just means like a pause and an exhale. C is for curious. And D is to decide. And the E and F kind of go with the D. So if you're imagining like a line down, it would go like A, B, C, D, line down. And then to the right of the D would be E, F, right? So it kind of makes a little L, A, B, C, D, and then E, F are the the bottom of the L. And the E and F are for envision your future. And so I'm going to give you an example. Imagine you are in the pantry at like 3 p.m. on a Saturday and you're feeling a little urgent and frantic and jittery and anxious and you're not really hungry, but you're like, I think I'll just like have a little bit of a snack. And so you're like, hold on a minute. I think that might be my diet brain talking. 
And you just become aware because you notice how it feels in your body. So you may become aware of your diet brain because of the vibration in your body. You may also just notice it mentally. You'll just notice yourself narrating something to yourself that you're like, huh, it sounds like a diet brain. Like when your brain's like, well, I mean, I worked out today. So even though I'm not hungry, I could eat a little bit. And you're like, but I'm not hungry. But you're like, well, it's fine. (laughs) Mine's always in a high-pitched voice. Well, I mean, it's fine because you did two workout classes today. And you're like, huh. I'm becoming aware, right? That's the A. I'm aware that that's my diet brain talking. Or I used to have someone in Naturally Thin for Life. She used to say, like, I get really squirrely fingers when it was her diet brain. And so she would just notice, like, she would have squirrely fingers kind of reaching for food or someone else would notice they want to eat really mindlessly. So you want to just become more aware of how your diet brain shows up. And you may notice it through the vibration in your body or you may just notice it through what your brain is telling you. So you want to be able to spot your unique diet brain. And I personally notice mine, and I don't have much kind of left of it anymore, but when I do, it's usually through like an anxious, jittery lightness in my body, but not like a good lightness, like a like a jittery lightness and that squirreliness and that urgentness. Or I'll just notice this like high-pitched voice that will tell me through some justification or through some permission of like, oh, but I mean, you're already at the weight you want. And I'm like, but I don't want to feel bad after <laughs> I don't want to feel bad for the rest of the night. And so you want to be able to spot it, okay? Spot your own diet brain. You want to be aware of what it sounds like in your head and what it feels like in your body. And so you just become aware of it. And then the B is for breathe, which means you just like literally take a breath. The point is to just pause for a second. Because when your diet brain is used to making the decisions for you, it will literally just like run the show and you won't even realize it's happening. And so when you start to become aware, you want to put that B in there, the B for the breath to just breathe. And so then you can put some separation between your diet brain and you can allow your naturally thin brain to start to come online. Because if your diet brain is used to being the predominant voice and the predominant decision maker, you want to train your naturally thin mind to become the predominant decision maker. And so it needs a minute (laughs) to catch up to the speed at which your diet brain is used to making all these decisions. So when you become aware that you are living in a diet brain thought or a diet brain feeling, and then you breathe and you just pause for a second. And then the C is to be curious. So you want to bring some curiosity in. The C is not for convince. (laughs) You don't want to convince your diet brain in a way that it's going to like whack back at you or like rebel against you. You don't need to convince yourself that that diet brain thought or feeling is not serving you. You just want to be curious. And so you can do this by asking yourself some questions. You may ask yourself, hold on, do I really want that food? How is it going to feel in my body when I'm done? Am I actually hungry? What would my naturally thin self say about this? And when your brain's like, but I never get this food and it's the one time of the year and I'm going to miss out if I don't eat it. And you notice you're feeling really frantic and jittery and anxious and you have those squirrely fingers in your body and now you're aware and then you breathe and then you're curious and you're like, hold on, do I really only get this food one time of the year? What am I really missing out on when I eat that food? Oh, I'm really missing out on feeling incredible in my body because I know when I eat that I'm not going to feel so good. And so you can start to debunk and outsmart your diet brain when you apply this ABCDEF method. And so you start to be curious with an open-ended question that will lead you to strengthening your naturally thin self. And so then what will happen is then as you're becoming curious, then you make your decision. So the D is after ABC and then D. So you're aware, you breathe, you're curious, and then you decide by envisioning your future. And this is really where the magic happens, where you are able to access so much of your own naturally thin wisdom. So you envision the future. You envision yourself five minutes from now. So you envision having just eaten food that maybe isn't going to serve you. You envision eating food that is going to serve you. You envision going to bed the way you want to feel. You envision yourself five minutes, five hours, five days, 50 years from now. It doesn't matter what length of time you use to envision your future. You just want to pick a point in time in which it serves you. And so for a lot of people, when they start this, I suggest you just decide how you want to feel going to bed tonight, or you decide how you want to feel an hour from now. You envision that future because it brings up 
the gratification to something that's very short in time, right? You don't have to wait 50 years. You're like, oh, in 30 seconds, when this food is no longer in my mouth and I'm left feeling uncomfortable, should I decide to eat it? But you realize my naturally thin self, she doesn't want to eat that because she doesn't want to feel uncomfortable. All of a sudden, you get that immediate gratification almost (laughs) immediately where you get to feel really good in your body and then you get to feel that way for the rest of the day. And then what happens is that becomes your more natural, innate way of thinking and being. And so you apply this over and over and you will get to know you will probably have some very common diet brain patterns that you become aware of. Remember, the A is aware, B is breathe, C is be curious, D is decide by E and F, envisioning your future. So aware, breathe, curious, decide, envision your future. And you can do this whole A, B, C, D, E, F process in, I don't know, 30 seconds or less. This doesn't need to be something where you like get out a piece of paper. Now you totally can, but it doesn't need to be something like this big cumbersome process. You just want to bring more and more and more awareness, which is why I started with some of the common diet brain lies is so that you can become aware that those are just diet brain lies. They're not truths of the world. And so that you can notice the ways in which your diet brain operates, both in how you hear yourself think and in how you feel in your body when you're around food and when you're thinking about your body. And so some of the other ways you may start to become aware of your diet brain is when you're doubting yourself and you're doubting your body. You're not trusting yourself. You're not building that trust with your body. When you want it to be perfect or when you're really impatient or when you want to throw in the towel, all of those can be ways in which your diet brain is talking to you. And the more you apply the ABCDEF method, you will see the compound effect of your body's innate desire to want to feel incredible. Because there's this temporary pleasure we get from food. So I don't want to kind of not acknowledge that. There is a temporary pleasure we get from food that tastes good. But like I was saying, food that tastes good and feels good in your body, it will actually start to taste better than food that tastes quote unquote good and doesn't leave your body feeling great. The food that does both tastes good and allows you to feel energized, lean and fit, or however you want to feel in your body, that will actually start to taste better and be more and more and more appealing. And so there's this temporary pleasure that we can get from food, but there's a deep, long-term desire, like pleasure and true joy that far outweighs those few moments of food in your mouth and that uncomfortable feeling in your body. And so the more you can tap into that, it's already in you. You don't need to like find it or create it or like discover it. You just need to tap back into it. It's already there. You just need to make it the stronger, most listened to part of your mind and body is that innate desire to feel incredible. So my friends, Start to understand your own diet brain so that you can outsmart it. And when you apply this A, B, C, D, E, F method, you will outsmart it. So much so that you will start to see your diet brain offer you some thoughts or suggestions. And it's literally feels like you kind of just like laugh at it in your head and you can outsmart it and see it so quickly then. And so when you do this, you will be able to have so much freedom, so much peace. And it doesn't mean you never, ever have like a diet brain thought again, but you have the skill of outsmarting it and listening to your true, naturally thin mind and body. So that becomes your new baseline so that your diet brain that comes in becomes the fleeting moments but your lived experience is feeling as energetic, as nourished, as alive and vibrant and having the most harmonious, joyful relationship with food and your body. All right, my friends, if you want to join us inside the Naturally Thin for Life membership, we have a monthly deep dive, How to Outsmart Your Diet Brain, where I'm diving deeper into 12 common and very specific diet myths and how to overcome them. And we're also diving deeper into how to apply this A, B, C, D, E, F method for you personally. And you can ask any questions that are personal to you. And so we start all of this live August 1st inside the Naturally Thin for Life membership. 
So some of the other myths we're going to cover, I'll just give you a couple real quick, is the myth that you need food to relax. So instead, I'm going to show you how to feel even more relaxed, regardless of whether or not you eat. And then from that genuine feeling of relax and from already having decompressed and being able to do that very quickly and very easily, then you get to decide if you want to eat, but not feeling like you need the food to decompress, not feeling like you need the food to relax. Another myth we're going to cover is that I'll just start again tomorrow. And it sounds so like, eh, it's not that big of a deal. I'll just start again tomorrow. But I'm going to walk you through how that habit keeps you putting what you want into the future, probably with your weight and probably with a lot of other things in your life. And so I'm going to teach you how to outsmart that diet brain myth. I'll just start again tomorrow by being more present in the now, because in this moment right now, that's the only time you get to make a decision, right? You can think about decisions in the future, but your decision only comes from right now. So we're going to dive deeper into how to do that from the lens of your naturally thin self. And then one other myth we're going to cover is that food creates connection, especially in social situations and in a lot of traditions. And I'm going to teach you instead how to foster even more connection with others so that food can be present, but the food doesn't need to be the thing that's creating the connection. Because a lot of times the belief that food creates connection leads us to eat in a way that is not honoring to our body and actually creates disconnection with other people because we become so distracted by the discomfort or the lack of feeling energized, lean, and fit in our body. So I'm gonna teach you how to foster even more connection And of course, let food be something that you enjoy with other people, but to not have it be the enjoyment. And then one of the other myths we're going to cover is that I just need to get into a better routine. I just need to find the right habit as if it's a behavior rather than the permanent naturally thin mindset that gets to go with you everywhere. So those are just a couple of the myths we're going to outsmart. And so when you decide to join us inside the Naturally Thin for Life membership before August 1st, you get to dive deep into 12 very specific diet brain lies. I'm going to teach you how to outsmart every single one. And then you're going to also fine tune and hone your skill of being able to outsmart your unique diet brain so that you just have that skill for the rest of your life. Because when you know how to outsmart your diet brain, you are so much more easily able to tap in what is even more true, which is your naturally thin mind and your naturally thin body. They just need to be strengthened and you're able to strengthen that by simply outsmarting your diet brain. All right, my friends. So if you want to join us inside the Naturally Thin for Life membership, you can do that at lauradixoncoaching.com forward slash join. And I will talk with you all next week. Have a great week outsmarting your diet brain. Friends, If you are loving what you are learning here on the podcast, you have to come check out my Naturally Thin for Life program. It is my on-demand lifetime access program where I teach you brand new concepts not taught here on the podcast. And I will walk you through exactly how to implement all of the tools I teach you here so that they become just a part of you. You will learn exactly how to understand your specific brain and your specific body so that you become naturally thin for the rest of your life and you no longer struggle with your weight. Inside of the Naturally Thin for Life program, you can also receive live help so that you consistently make progress and reach your goal. I will teach you how to accelerate your naturally thin journey in a sustainable way so that the change becomes permanent. The best part is that it's risk-free. You either love it or I will give you your money back. If you are ready to finally be naturally thin for life, join us at lauradixoncoaching.com forward slash work with me. That's L-A-U-R-A-D-I-X-O-N coaching.com and click on the work with me tab. I cannot wait to see you there.